Or so your preliminary report. statement on the Zimbabwean elections drew a sharp reaction, particularly from um, ZANU PF officials, some government officials maybe, uh, who, who, who thought you were not really fair. But what do you think caused the misunderstanding? I think that uh, they misguided themselves, whether it's deliberate or not. You must understand Zimbabwe is one of the oldest members of SADC. Zimbabwe knows the protocols of SADC. Uh, Zimbabwean government knows um, that they are the vice chair of SADC. They know about this little booklet. Uh, and they, they mis whosoever started that story misguided himself to say that the head of mission, in this case myself, I wrote that report by Maybe myself. Maybe you need to explain. I was going to ask you who prepared the report. Yeah. So I'm co coming to that. But I think that's their problem. Their problem, they thought that Nevis Mumba is the one who prepared the report. So they're shooting at a wrong animal in the, in, in the bush. You know, they're pursuing a totally d wrong animal. Even if they killed it, they wouldn't eat it because that's not, you know, the animal they are after. They, like I said in the beginning, SADC is a well-structured organization. I must add that SADC is one of the most respected regional groupings uh, on the continent of Africa, and it's, got, it's respected at AU, it is respected uh, at UN because of the manner in which they attempt uh, to represent their nations. So what happens is that from the day we arrived, the process began. I arrived to a whole list of meetings stakeholders come to the hotel where we were hosting as the command center and we met ambassadors uh, sadic ambassadors we met european ambassadors we met political party leaders both from the opposition and also from government mm -hmm. we met uh, government officials attorney general the inspector general of police we met um, uh, civil society we met the church i mean it was a long list close to 16 different organizations and individuals who gave us feedback on their perception of the election, of the difficulties they see, the hurdles and, and the unfair things that they saw, and they fed that to us. After that, we now had a very robust media team occupying a whole room where they were monitoring all media that, was, that is in Zimbabwe and coming from outside the country, and they'll feed me as head of state, and they'll feed the secretariat with that information. So that was also added to our, you know, to our uh, investigation of the election. Then beyond that, on the 18th of August, we flagged off and sent 50 of our observers in the 10 provinces of Zimbabwe. And then from the 24, from the uh, 18th, they began now to feed the headquarters with their observations prior to the election. And we're receiving these, you know, reports every night. We'd sit in front of a big screen using technology, getting reports from all the provinces and updating our data and information. On election day, they were busy feeding the center with all every little development that they saw they reported to the headquarters and after we get all that information then we give it to the drafts team the drafting team was composed of about 12 people from nine different sadic countries we had South Africa, we had Botswana, we had Malawi, we had Tanzania, we had Eswatini, we had um, uh, uh, Namibia. Namibia, then we had Zambia, and we had nine Sadic countries. So this was not a Zambian mission, this was a Sadic mission. And they sat around the table, got all this information together, and worked on a draft statement, which we call primary draft statement. And it was that statement that was now brought to the table where it was edited, uh, removing anything that we felt was not supported by other evidence and other facts, and I was not even there for that meeting. It was the Secretariat of SADC, it was the Troika, that is, Troika means that Zambia is the chair, President Hakainde Chilema is the chair, but his representative was Ambassador um, Chibanda, and then Namibia had their representative as well, as the, um, the past, immediate past uh, president, uh, chair of the Troika. Then we also had Tanzania, which, which are the incoming after President Hagainde Chilema, it will be Tanzania. So those are called the Troika. So there's the secretariat, there's the, the Troika, then there's a group called SIAC. And this is the advisory council uh, of SADC on matters of elections and everything. It's a group of lawyers 
and we were honored to have a, a, a judge who is an active judge from Eswatini. These are the ones who go through every detail to make sure that we are legally sound in the statement. So these sit around the table and flash that thing on the screen and scrutinize it sentence by sentence by sentence and edit it. After they finish editing, then they call me. I had an office there at Sheraton. They would call me and say, Mr. Head of Mission, now we have finished our job. Can you come? Here's the report. Here's the report. So then I will sit with all of them. We were more than 25 of us in that room with the draft report. I looked at it, and I had to compare what they had written to the notes I was taking when we were interviewing the stakeholders. Uh, for them, they were privileged because I didn't find anything in the report that was not coming from the stakeholders who had talked to us. So I made no changes in the statement. So how much, do you, just, I to, adopted just, it. just to ask you there, how much influence do you have as head of Observer Mission to alter and input, impute things into, into, into the report? I think I could uh, suggest if I think that something is uh, not right uh, and it's not supported by fact. Um, I don't think you have that unilateral power to because change. these are these are professionals. This is what they do. So if you are going to challenge what they have written, you really have to have a good reason why you're challenging it. So I, I, I think that it is important to make this clear because I have heard people saying that Nevers wrote this statement. Nevers didn't write the statement. Nevers read the statement. So when people rise up to come after Nevers, they are really totally misled. And then they're also saying it was President Haka Inde Ichilema who took that report and changed things and gave it to his stooge Nevers so that he can, you know, create a, an embarrassment for, 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 Zimbabwe. For, for Zimbabwe. Far be from it. President Haka Inde Ichilema looked at the report and just like me, he never changed a word of what the technocrats did, of what the professionals did. Not a single word. I must remind you, when he sent us to Zimbabwe, I was waiting for him to give me a long list of what I must be doing there. He never did. He said to me, Mr. Vice President, go on behalf of SADC, and all I expect from you is to help to give the Zimbabweans uh, a free, fair, and credible election. Those are the only, he said it twice. I need nothing from you, Mr. Vice President, but free, fair, and credible election, you would have done your job. Yeah. When I was in Zimbabwe, and we were on our way to go and see President Munagagwa to pay a courtesy call on him, I contacted the president here, President Haka in Ichilem. I said, Mr. President, I'm going to see, we are going to see your colleague. Uh, do you have a word for him? Any greeting, whatever? He said, no. The only thing you tell my colleague is that let's go ahead and give the Zimbabweans a free, fair, and credible election. He repeated the same words. So there so was, it was one mandate. There and, and, and was no and, uh, instruction from President Haka Inde Chilema. He had no input in this speech, which is now being debated globally. The preliminary report. Yeah. What are the obligations of, the, of um, observers and observer mission in line with the SADC uh, principles and guidelines governing democratic elections, which you've referred to, is for you to maintain strict impartiality in, the, in your conduct, not to show bias, not to, to express any bias or, or preference in relation to the candidates and whatever is happening in that, in that election. But your impartiality was called to question mm -hmm. that you sided with Chamisa. <laughs> Just like I said on the issue of um, saying that Nevers wrote the statement, they were looking for anything because I think this report is not common um, in the Sadiq, you know, uh, countries. Some of them they don't expect Sadiq to challenge anything. Uh, they expect Sadiq to you know, just go with whatever is going on, and this is maybe the first time the experience. So there was a reaction. Um, then they, evolved, they created a story that the Sadiq uh, went to, went, accompanied Chamisa to the polling station to vote. A total fabrication. This was, this was supported by photos, uh, uh, not of course, no, not no, at no, the no, polling no. station, but of you sitting with Chamisa. And no, it no, showed that is like the time well, when I sat with Chamisa, it was the time he came to meet Sadiq with his team. 
and we took pictures, just like we took pictures with President Monagagua. And these are things that are really shocking me, that people think would go to observe an election and not talk to stakeholders. Who else did you meet? Maybe you need to explain. We, we, we met, uh, like I, I've gave 11 given, contenders, did you meet all of them? Uh, we met about uh, four of them. The others were not coming forth. So we met um, President Chamisa and his team. We met President Munagango and, his, and, and, and also we met the Secretary General um, of, of ZANU-PF at their headquarters with his entire team. So these are the, the interactions we had. But let me go back to your question. So they said that Nevers and the Sadiq team escorted Chamisa. They, I think they were now trying to create a story. We never uh, uh, Escorted Chamisa. In any case, even if we had gone where he was going, it was still in order because any time you, you as, a, as an observer, you find out two things. Where is the incumbent going to cast his vote? Where is the leading opposition going to cast their vote? Then you split yourselves as observers. Some go where the president is casting the vote. The others go where the opposition is casting the vote. In this case, President um, Munagagwa was casting his vote in Kwekwe which was very far away from Harare. So our observers there went and took care of that. Those of us that were in Harare went where Chamisa was, but he found us there. We didn't go with him. I never made any contact with him, no eye contact. He didn't see me. We were observing. And the reason we do that is to make sure that when we write our report, it's legit. In, in any, he could come up and say, they did not allow me to vote, or they they, they stoned me, and, uh, but if you are observing, you can say, no, 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 Mr. Chamisa, that's not what happened. We were there, we observed it. So I think that is cheap for people to say what they're saying, and uh, it, I know maybe the emotions that are at, you know, attached to an election, but we went to, to Zimbabwe in order to lift up the hands of the Zimbabwean people and work with them uh, to realize their dreams and ensure that we point out those things which in the next election they can work on. Look, uh, Grevazio, here in Zambia, we have received some of the most damning electoral reports from different uh, uh, observer missions. And what we do is, well, we take those things, take what we think we can use to correct our ways, and those things we don't agree with, we diss them. Why is this so different? Because Zimbabwe knows that they are, they are supposed to appeal with the, against this through the channels that are created. You can't play this game on the streets. This is very high level stuff. You can't play with this on the street. And I think that I am confident myself that um, Zimbabwe is going to do the right thing. I believe that Zimbabwe is going to follow the procedures and they are going to have their questions answered. One thing that is surprising is that with the people that are challenging our statement, there is no one who has come to say this issue that you have raised here is wrong. It, no That's one the issue come. of the constitution which they say, this constitution we gave to ourselves. Yeah, and but you as an observer, observation mission, you cannot turn yourself into a constitution review commission no, we are and, not and, review. And, and pass judgment on, on No, we on, never on pass any judgment. We, that issue is in this little booklet. In other words, the Sadiq Observer Team has got the responsibility to come here to Zambia. And if you've made a law that says that you, know, you cannot campaign, only the ruling party can campaign, the Sadiq will take note of that law and put it in their report as a recommendation to the member state that that law stands in the way of free and fair elections. And your parliament must look into that law because we are a community. We have agreed on certain norms, and those norms must reflect democratic norms. So I think that that question of saying that we are trying to interrogate their law, no. It's a law that impedes in the free and fair elections. And I think that we must continue to be strong to ourselves. You know, maybe it's the African thing. You know, Africa, we, we use euphemism to talk to each other. Instead of saying that, uh, you know, allow people to look at their, at the, for instance, the ballot papers. It's in our report. The stakeholders in Zimbabwe did not see the ballot paper until the day of voting. They don't know who, they, they only knew who printed it three days before the elections. They don't, 
they, they don't know how it moved to the police station. There's no one who goes with it. So these are issues that we feel like we must learn from each other. Peer review mechanism. And that's, that's what you put in your report. See how other countries do it. Maybe we can get in a caller. Uh, Mr. Mwewa from Lusaka. Um, Mr. Mwewa, welcome to the program. Go ahead and ask your question. Good evening, Gabriel. Good evening. Good yeah. evening, good evening. Yeah, good evening, uh, Dr. Bumba. Mm -hmm. Hello? Go ahead. We can hear you. Yes, uh, I wanted to find out something. Uh, I've been listening to uh, Dr. Mumba. Uh, you know, writing a, writing a report is one thing. The format and the language of the report is another thing. Now, that report which he wrote, or they wrote, this is a collective uh, responsibility. Did it, was it in line with the guidelines, the subject guidelines and the policies? In other words, is there a format in which the, the report must be presented and the language of the, in the report? Because what, I, what I'm sensing here is that probably the people of Zimbabwe are offended, one, by the language and probably the format of the report. It was not in line with the subject guidelines. The expectations. So there, are there guidelines? Does subject guidelines give the, the kind of language that you should use in the report and the format? Mr. Thank Mawa, you so thank much. you so much. We've got a, we've got a question. Yeah, le, le, is there a format? Yeah, le, is there yeah. a language, prescribed let me, let, language? Yeah, let me help him also by telling him that um, when he says the people of Zimbabwe, are free, that's not true. I mean, go, just go to social media and find out what Zimbabweans are saying about this report. You'll be shocked on how they have embraced this report. So when he says Zimbabwean people, I do not think that's accurate. But let me come to, there's a template that is used all the time report. So we did not create a new template. It's a template which you populate as they observe. And I must say that this is a highly scientific uh, process. It's a scientific process because it has a system to it and the, it has headings already and they populate each one of those headings. So to answer our colleague who asked the question, yes, there's a template that is used by SADIC and it follows the guidelines of SADIC. One thing I want to assure the Zambians is that this report that was done, and I'm talking to Zambians now because some people try to mislead Zambians, but this report that was done was done in accordance with the guidelines and the principles of SADIC. We never went out. There could be a mistake, maybe in a comma, a full stop, or a word, which may mean two things, but because life is not perfect. But in terms of the foundations upon which we built this statement, it was built on the constitution of Zimbabwe. We had to always have the copy of the Constitution. And if there was a departure from their own laws, we pointed it out. Then the second thing we use, like I said, is the Electoral <laughs> Act. And it guides the Zimbabweans how they are going to handle their elections. And if they depart from it, the observer says, but you departed from this. The third thing are the guidelines for SADIC. And these three guided us right away through until the statement was made. So. It can stand strong and tall in any courthouse, this statement. At any time. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the whole issue now is turned into Western imperialism versus communism and Marxism. Should this be the topic of debate? Maybe before you go there, uh, I didn't uh, honor your question, which you asked before that, and I think it's fair that I talk about the impartiality issue that you talked about. I think it's unfair to say that never or, or Sadiq is impartial. As some of the people decided that um, because Chamisa is a pastor, then I'm impartial. And I think it's an insult to my integrity and to my dignity that they think that I can compromise my sense of judgment because Gravazio had lunch with me yesterday, and if he's done a wrong thing that I'll, I'll, I don't operate like that. I am addicted to justice. I am addicted to fairness. That's really what I am as a pastor or just as a political leader. Zambians know that if you want truth, talk to Nevers. I will not depart. It's painful, like I'm paying a high price now. There are people that are already in this country that have been sent to look for me. And they have been talking to my pastors with cameras, uh, trying to create stories about me. But that doesn't move me because truth shall set you free. It doesn't matter how long it takes. I was Yes, 
I, he's a pastor, but I don't even know uh, Mr. Chamisa's wife. I don't know his children. I know he's a pastor. I've never heard him preach. So I do know him as, as a man who has a passion for his country. But I also know President Munagagwa. And I was with him, and we had a lot of laughter to do. He has a strong Zambian background. He speaks most of our languages. And when I was at State House, we were using Zambian language to speak to each other. So I have that cordial relationship with him. It has nothing with both. to do. Let, let's, let's get in a caller yeah. before, before, before we lose her. We'll take up from Mpika. Uh, you, are, you are through to the program. Please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, good evening, Mr. Grevazo. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Dr. Bomba. Good evening, good evening. So I represent an organization called Community Action Against the Political Violence. I'm the Secretary General for that organization. Mine is more of a comment than a, a, a question. I think uh, to begin with, it is important that we need to be a brother's keeper in as far as that uh, country is concerned. One of the reasons that you realize that uh, there are unrest in the African countries is the issue to do with the governance, especially when the citizens feel that uh, uh, the electoral processes and governance is not fair. So from our point of view, I think uh, it is important to applaud, you know, Sadiq through, you know, the president, uh, Mr. Haga and the, also the uh, the, the observer leader that he said, Dr. Nevas Mumba, because that report, like you have said, uh, Dr. Mumba, it is not your report. I think that's where we are missing it as citizens, and also especially we have seen some sentiments from other opposition political parties that are just alarming, uh, issuing alarming statements. That is like, he, you know, Dr. Mumba went to Zimbabwe and he, our current president wants to change the governance of Zimbabwe. So I think as a brother's keeper, Sadiq member states should go into an honest conversation with the, the Zimbabwean leadership. In as far as Mr. the Muteka, we have to we concerned. have to allow you to go. Yeah. <laughs> we need to yeah, allow Dr. Mumba. Thank you so much for calling in and for your contribution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, l let me help here. Uh, I think that um, the narrative that is going on that uh, President Haka Inde Chilema and Nevers Mumba are being used by Western powers to uh, effect regime change in, um, in, Zimbabwe. in Zimbabwe. I think to me is one of the most unfortunate cheap statements that anybody can make. Um, first of all, President Haka Ndechlema didn't send me there as, as, a, as a Zambian president. He sent me there on behalf of Sadiq. And they must respect uh, the chairmanship that is being held by President Haka Ndechlema. He has been given that. He was elected to be that. And all Sadiq must respect that role that he's playing. And he chooses whom he believes will be able to deliver. And I believe that we did deliver on behalf of not just Zambia, but on behalf of Sadiq. And I think that this usage, uh, Gravazio, of the word the Western and uh, propaganda. Western imperialism. And imperialism and communism. Puppet, puppet. Marxism Let and me uh, address puppet. It. Pu if you give me puppet of the West. If you yes. give me four minutes, let me deal with this subject. To my brothers and sisters in the political field of this country. Let's not cheapen ourselves to try to divide ourselves as a people between two powers that have nothing or very little to do with us. We are not Westerners. We are not communists. We are Africans. And if you start to divide the continent along those lines, you are cheapening who you are. We have our own interests as Africa. Yes, I think that for us as Zambia, our approach has been to work with any country who can help us to better the lives of the Zambian people. The West, for instance. There are things we like about the West and things we don't like about the West. And we call the Western thing the Western thought. It is a, a, a thought of freedom, a thought of democracy, a thought of regular elections. So every Zambian, every politician who goes to vote on a voting day, he's exercising a Western thought. So he's a Western puppet. Anybody who goes to vote, if you want to use that puppet issue, is a Western puppet because voting and regular elections are a Western, Western ideology. thought. It's ideology. It's, it's a freedom of, 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 of the freedom of expression, the freedom of, of association. That is why that is very close to the Bible, where God allows people to freely choose their own things that they want. And that's where that comes from. 
the Eastern Bloc, which my colleagues here in this country perpetuate and push. We have nothing against them. I like their infrastructure projects with us. Russia helped, uh, helped a lot of African countries to receive their independence. But there are things we don't celebrate about them. For instance, we, we, we think that Marxism, communism, socialism, these isms are the ones that control, they control the people, they want to think for people, and people's thinking is actually regulated by government, and they are not that churchy. They, that's where you found in China, in Russia, the persecution of Christians is high there. Because, and then also the thing some of us don't like there, and I don't like things like homosexuality on the Western side. So we pick what we like and we leave what we don't like. On the Eastern side, we like their engagement with you know, structures and things. But you must understand China and Russia, they are the ones that really look down about, upon black people. If you look how they treat black people, you cannot say that they are our messiahs. No, we are our own messiahs. We have chosen God as a leader of our country, and we should make sure we do that. And my well, well, Let's get in a caller. We've got Ambassador George Zulu on the line. Uh, Ambassador, you're through to the program. Please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, good evening, uh, Kribalio. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Vice President Mumba. Good evening, sir. First of all, I uh, should uh, congratulate you for the first class work you did in Zimbabwe. Thank you. The Zimbabwe issue is historical. You did Zambia beauty. You remember that uh, even during the time of struggle, when we were fighting and going to Lancaster House, Kenneth Kaunda was accused of favoring Joshua Nkomo to Robert Mugabe. When President Robert, Robert Mugabe became president, President Mwanawasa was equally accused of having favored the opposition in that country. So that is not new. What, what we need is to follow what you have done. Done it very, very well for Zambia. We need to engage Zimbabwe without fear or shame so that we can find a common ground in terms of democracy. We as Zambians are not happy with that, what that country has gone through. It has gone through a traumatic period. But what you did, you did Zambia what your forefathers could have done. You could have not done anything better than what you did. We need Zambians to applaud your job in that country. I'm sure that ZANU PF will begin to understand what you stand for and what Zambia stands for. We don't favor anybody. We favor proper democracy in our region. Ambassador, thank you so much for thank coming you. through. Yeah. Uh, thank you God for your contribution. Yeah. So God maybe, 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 doctor, you would you, 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 you pick this other question also. The importance of free and fair elections to SADC and Africa. I know, according to the guidelines, SADC operates with five key concepts, looking at uh, credible elections, transparent elections, peaceful elections, free elections, fair elections. You know why? If we don't work hard, on ensuring that the elections in our region are free and fair will create a problem for ourselves. People will start to find other ways to express themselves. This is why SADC insists on all member countries to comply with those that you have just read. Tra tra transparency, transparency is one of the biggest problems that we are facing right now. And if we don't do that, like I was saying when, when, when the call came in, there are a lot of us in the political world today, and I won't mention any names, that have become so reckless in trying to divide us between the West and the East. And someone saying that uh, uh, Hagaiinde Chilema is a puppet of the West, and puppet, puppet every day, they are also puppets of whosoever they dance their music to. So you, you cannot call your friend a puppet just because he doesn't believe in what you believe. The reason they are doing that is to divide this country and, and, and I have to warn the politicians, 
you know our friends, all of us in politics, Zambians, you know our friends, people we fraternize with. Look at the friends each one of us has. Look what they are doing in West Africa. They are trying to create the same situation here. They are trying to prepare an atmosphere for coups around Africa. And they have chosen certain political leaders to speak a certain language of bringing a division to say, this one is a Western puppet. This one is, uh, I don't know what they call themselves, like, you know, they belong to the East, they belong to Marxism, they belong to socialism, they belong to uh, communism. We have to be careful. It's no longer funny. What is happening in Africa must be stopped, and it must be stopped now. When you see the signs in any one of us that we don't have the country at heart, we want to become presidents at any cost, it does not matter who dies in the process. You must stop us as Zambians. So I want all of us in politics, let us be bigger than our own personal ambitions. Zambia must come first. Let's, let's get in some, some messages. We've, we've got people that uh, have been texting us and, and trying to ask, uh, participate in the program, to ask a few questions. So most of them are coming from our Facebook page. Uh, we've got to get them. Um, uh, we've got New Life Tandavarai. On behalf of Zimbabwe and Masses, we are fully behind you, Dr. Nevas Sakwila Mumba. We've got uh, Tim Jones, Dr. Nevis Mumba did a fantastic job. The only problem is everyone is afraid to say what the truth was. Uh, recent Sibusenga, for once you have revived the Sadek. You left a lifetime mark of true patriot, Tichafara Nyamutowera. Uh, Sampa Elim Sonda, you have jeopardized our relationship with Zimbabwe. As head of the mission, you have jurisdictions to offer any judgment as the con. I think you do not have jurisdiction to offer any judgment as the country in question was, has existing legal system to deal with such. The last one, it was an embarrassment seeing your statement different from statesmen as Nyoma and uh, Chisano. <laughs> there were so no statements from <laughs> Nyoma or Chisano. So, this is the done, problem yeah, so we, we, yeah, we could react to, we, yeah. can re, we can react to the messages. So. Yeah, this is the problem we have in Zambia. Very few have read the report. That colleague of ours is saying that uh, the statements from Nyoma and uh, Chisano, there were no statements from Nyoma and Chisano because they were not observers in, in that. Uh, President Chisano was there not as an observer. He's working on a total program with the government of, of Zimbabwe. So I, I think that uh, the, uh, for the bigger part, the Zimbabwean people know what we attempted to do. We cannot choose leaders for them. They choose leaders for themselves. We go there as SADC to stand shoulder to shoulder with them, to ensure that there's credibility in the system that raises their leaders. Because a, a faulty and a flawed um, uh, process produces a flawed result. And therefore, our con con concern is to make sure that every Sadiq nation abides by the, their own regulations that they have set for themselves. So we appreciate those who see what we're attempting to do. But obviously, some people don't read. They are saying that you have brought division within Sadiq. We haven't brought division. This report, because it's based on truth, shall become a sign of, of you know, integrity in the region. Remember that Sadiq is coming from a place where it is facing credibility issues. It's facing credibility issues because of what happened in Malawi, for instance. In Malawi, Sadiq gave it their signature that the election was free and fair and it was good. Only a few months later, it was overturned by the courts that it was fraudulent. And when the things were coming out, it embarrassed Sadiq to such levels that it's only now that Sadiq is rising up through this report that we can observe, write what we observe, face the cameras, and tell them that this is what we have found out. If we are wrong, let Zimbabwe go to the uh, process that has been established by Sadiq and lodge their complaint, and they can be heard at that point. But we stand by this report. It is rooted in truth. It is rooted in the people that were professional when they were working on it. Over 20 people went through that From document. different countries. Mm -hmm. let's, let's get in a caller. Uh, Mr. Piri from Sulawesi. You are through the program? I think we've, we've lost we've Mr. Lost. Piri there, I think. Yeah, uh, we've lost. Now, the, the, we can stay on on that other question of 
you've soured the relations between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Could that be no, the correct no, position? No, no, no. And, Absolutely. And maybe, and I, maybe that is riding from some attacks that coming from ruling party members yeah, in but Zimbabwe. Yeah, look, at the There's end of the stuff. day, uh, listen to what the Zimbabweans are saying on the streets. I think that's where you can get the judgment of this report. What are they saying? We are political animals, you know? I mean, the political leaders in Zimbabwe, they're also politicians, cadres and stuff like that. They don't think in the line of the order that they have created for themselves. And I have no, no feelings of hatred for those who have spoken against me, those who have insulted me, insulted my family, insulted everything that I stand for. They have started investigations in this country around my church, my everything. It's okay with me. It's not the first time it's happening. But when it comes to truth, you, 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 I, I, I don't compromise on that. And the language that was used was moderated in order to make sure that our point is heard. And I think that we need to solve the problem that is there. And the problem is that we are trying to divide ourselves as a continent alongside Western and Eastern. And that's not our battle. And I think Zimbabwe must challenge this report by telling us that point one, two, three is wrong. Then we can go back to their constitution or we can go to this little booklet and show them where we are anchoring that report. And for the Zambians, I would like to advise them. There's no need for us to panic. There's no need for us when somebody goes out there, out of the country, to represent the country. Then we start to, 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 to hate. I know that you may not like the person that has gone, that has been asked to play that task, but you are Zambians. Listen first to all facts before you start to throw So you can insults. make any judgment. Uh, yeah, doc, let's, get in, judgment let's get in a caller. Mr. Kasoma from Mansa. Um, uh, you're through to the program. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, good evening, Rivazio. Good evening, Dr. Mumba. Good evening, sir. Dr. Mumba, uh, I don't have a question as such. I just want to comment. And my comment is that, I'll be very honest with you, I'm so, so proud of you. You are an upright man. In Africa, I think we had gone astray. Because when we look at leaders, we think they, they are like gods. I think it's high time we started moving away from that kind of thinking. And it can only take upright people, like you, Dr. Mumba, to show the world that... We as Africans are able to see through that this is wrong, this is right. I'm proud of you. Keep it up, Dr. Mumba. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Kasoma. Thank you. So, Doc, you were trying to, to explain. And as you explained that, look, there's no need to divide East and West. Yes. That, that's a big topic now. It is a very big topic. And, and, and then there's the issue of, of, of relations. I think you still have to get back to that. But then you also have to... Talk to the politics, changing politics on the continent, yeah. Africa, and, and particularly in And that's what I want to do last. But I, I, I just want to go back a little bit on um, saying that we have divided, you know, or rather we have injured the relationship between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Let me repeat, I did not go to Zimbabwe as a Zambian uh, representing, taking the Zambian Electoral Act or the Zambian Constitution to observe that election. We took the SADC instruments to be able to assess that. If Zimbabwe at any time has a problem with the report, they are not going to come to Zambia. They cannot blame President Haka in the H-level. What is going on is unacceptable. There is no reason why Zimbabwe should involve President Ichilema in this noble task that has been done. He's doing his job, and they must respect him. And some of the statements that are coming from there are totally unacceptable. Whether they have the blessings of the leadership of the country, we don't know. And that's not for me to say. But I think that let's not react so dramatically uh, and drastically to a report that you can challenge through the normal um, avenues that have been provided for us. So I think that we need to run away. Nothing has been uh, injured between Zambia and, 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 and Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean people and the Zambian people will always be brothers and sisters. We have always been like that, and no politician will divide Zambia and Zimbabwe. Whether it's a Zambian politician or it's a Zimbabwean politician, we are one people and we shall remain one people. So. You were asking about this message the, of caution to the Zambians. Mes uh, oh, um, caution uh, to the Zambians. 
I have changing already, trends. I have already mentioned here today, let's not act like we don't know what's happening on the continent of Africa. The coups that are taking place in the western part of our continent, these are realities on the ground. How do they start? They start with un, un, unruly political leaders, desperate political leaders, who start to make inflammatory statements against those in government or their friends who are leading them, and they try to make them look like these are people who are being used by other nations to impose themselves here. I mean, I was very disappointed to hear somebody in Zimbabwe saying that Harendo Isklema was installed by by imperialists. How do you say that? How do you explain that to the millions that lined up at four or five o'clock in the morning to vote? Are those the imperialists that you're talking about? And we don't take that kindly. We don't take that kindly because at the end of the day, they're trying to prepare the ground for a swell of people start to say, yes, he's been put, placed there by imperialists. No, that is not acceptable. And I say to Zambians, watch us as politicians. Please watch us. Stop clapping for us when we make these statements that we are making in order to win political mileage. It's not a game. There are lives in this country that need to be protected. There is a future for our children and our grandchildren. And it's not about you becoming president. It's about Zambia being protected. And we need to be fair in the manner we campaign for the high office of president. And I think it's important that all of us Zambians be on a lookout. Stop clapping for things that are going to destroy the nation. Let's clap for things that will unite the nation. Lastly, Doc, under a minute, maybe what lessons can be picked from the Zimbabwean election? We're running out of time. I, I'll I give think, you a minute. I, I think that we have a situation now where Zambia can learn the fact that whenever we are challenged by the community to which we belong, in this case, Sadiq, we should not react like you know, we have no other avenues to react. I think that Zimbabwe should show the fact that they are members of SADC, and I'm sure they will do that. And I want to close by saying that I do not want us to go home thinking that there is a break between Zambia and Zimbabwe. This was not a Zambian program. This was a SADC program. And we are sure that Zimbabwe will come right after it all settles down, tomorrow they're having the inauguration. And once they get back to work, I'm sure that all the engines of peacemaking between the two of us and amongst the Sadiq nations will continue to happen. I'm very positive. We don't need anything to divide us. We need everything to bring so us together. Two countries. Dr. Mumbai, Thank you so much. it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much. You've been watching Sign the Interview, and this evening our guest was Dr. Nevas Mumba, former Vice President and Head of SADC Electoral Observation Mission to Zimbabwe. I'll be back next week sometime. Pleasant viewing.